a little Lightroom tutorial video. Uh, as you can see here on my screen, we have a shot that I took the other day over at the China Pavilion at Epcot. Um, it's a shot that compositionally I, I think I like a little bit. Um, I like some of the reflection down here. I like some of the foreground elements leading up to the Temple of Heaven, which is one of the uh, more shot buildings in World Showcase, I would say. It's very pretty. Everybody likes to take photos of it. Uh, so, get things started here. One of the first things I'm going to do is go in and check my white balance. I'm just going to hit auto and see what it gives me. Uh, and it went to 7350. I'm not so much a fan of that. I'm going to pull it back a tiny, tiny bit. Uh, maybe to around, yeah, 63 sounds good. Um, I like photos a little bit on the warm side sometimes. Uh, so we'll see if that works. Uh, second thing I notice here, just from looking at the photo right away, is that it's a little bit uneven. So I'm going to hit the R key from my crop and I'm just going to turn it in a tiny, tiny bit. Hit the R key again, went a little bit too far. Looks pretty good. So uh, one of the things I noticed this day when I was shooting was we had really nice skies, um, but sometimes the exposures didn't really line up with those skies. Um, clearly I exposed in this shot for everything else that's on the bottom, the, the grass here in the foreground, the buildings, the temple, etc. So what I'm gonna do here first, uh, Exposure I think is good because I want to keep everything here in the in the foreground the way it is So I'm gonna go into the the highlight slider, which is very powerful in Lightroom 4 uh, I'm gonna pull it down a little bit if I go too far. It's gonna flatten things out. and I don't want that. So I'm gonna go to about Well, maybe 30 34 is good. I think uh, for now um, I'm also gonna raise the shadows a tiny tiny bit uh, just so I can get a good balance on uh, on the foreground. I'm going to go up to, hmm, this looks good, I think 36. It just gives you a little extra detail. You have all that detail in your sensor on today's digital cameras, so so why not why not give it some, some power? Um, if you guys watched the first video that I did, um, you'll recall that with the sharpening, uh, when you want a mask, you can actually hold down the option or alt key depending on what type of computer you're working on um, and you will actually see uh, this kind of thing happen to your image uh, and you can also do that um, when you're working in the whites and blacks up here in the top so I'm gonna go ahead and, and hit the option key on my Mac and then click and you're gonna see a black screen if I pull this slider to the right really far you're gonna see some crazy colors the whole idea behind this is that you want to pull the whites right until you start to get some actual white showing up. So right here it's showing me 35 looks pretty good. Um, <clears throat> same thing with the blacks. Hold down the option key, click on it. Um, there's a little bit of speckled black in there but not really enough to my liking so I'm going to pull it down until I get some, some true black in there. Um, 38, 39, maybe 36. Good so far. So you're starting to see a little bit of change in the image from the first, uh, the first one, which is which is a good thing. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, push my clarity a tiny bit now, uh, just to again pop some of that detail. Go up to I guess 13 looks good. Um, and then for vibrance, again, if you go too far, it's going to look wacky. Um, so I'm going to stick here in the the 38, 39, somewhere in that realm. Um, and that, that's looking not too too bad uh, but one thing I do want to do uh, and show you guys here is up here at the top of the develop module we have a uh, graduated filter tab which is really cool uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on the uh, the image and pull it down uh, and it's going to make this happen uh, so what I'm going to do is turn it on its side a little bit uh, and the main reason for this is we're going to make a graduated effect like we had a uh, a multiple stop ND filter uh, on the camera. If you go too far with the exposure, you're going to see a big amount of darkening. Um, we'll pull it down to somewhere in this realm. I'm actually going to also go here and spin the filter a tiny, tiny bit. Uh, the reason is we want to get all of this up here a little bit darker, but we don't want to affect what's going on down here because I like where the exposure is there. I'm also going to adjust the highlights a tiny bit because the highlight uh, slider is so powerful and now it's only going to be adjusting 
uh, to what I have here selected with my graduated filter. So you can see the difference when I pull the highlights down, bring them back up. Pretty cool. Uh, I'm just going to hit done and you're going to see a little bit of difference in the image from the beginning to now. We're getting there. It's starting to look pretty good, I think. Um, from here, we're going to go into the, uh, the hue, saturation, and luminance tab. Uh, like you've probably noticed in my photos and from the last video, I am a big fan of the color blue. So I'm going to push these blues. I want a nice blue sky, a nice saturated blue sky. So I'm up to 35. Um, I don't really want to touch anything else uh, in terms of saturation, but luminance wise, um, I think these greens are a little, a little bit too powerful. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the yellow tab and the green tab down. I pulled the yellow tab down as well because within those greens, you will find some yellows. Uh, if you see, if I pull the yellow tab down a whole lot, that green is going to change. So just because it looks like it's green doesn't mean it's all green. It could be part yellow, part green. So I'm going to pull down the, uh, the blues from my blue sky as well. And now we're getting a nice rich blue sky thanks to the adjustment on that color and due to the graduated filter that we, that we did a few minutes ago, which is great. Um, from here, I think we're starting to look pretty good. Um, I'm going to go ahead and sharpen. Um, I like I use the, uh, the sharpening tool down here in the detail. Um, you know, I usually go somewhere in the, you know, 55 to 75 range. I, I think if I go too far, it's going to look, you know, really, really sharp, which is a little bit too much. So I'm going to end up at, at 70 here. I'm going to click to pull back out. And then I'm going to do my option alt trick again for the masking. I don't want to get too, too much of that, that blue sky. Um, with, but we want to sharpen just a little tiny bit of the detail in the clouds. So I'm going to go to 75. Um, and we're starting to get there. Um, vignette, maybe, maybe not, you know, anything like that, it's way too much. Um, I'm going to pull it down to seven's good. And then we'll actually extend the midpoint a tiny bit so that it doesn't cloud too much of the middle image. So from here, we basically have a, a complete image from start to finish. Uh, one great thing you can do when you're using Lightroom is you can hit the L key. It's called, it's for lights out. Tap it once, it's going to darken everything in the back. Tap it one more time, it's going to show you just the image. And here's the beginning image that we started out with. And then there's the finished product. So I think there is a, a pretty drastic change there. And I did this all in, according to my computer, a little under eight minutes. So um, in my eyes, that's pretty cool. Um, the power of Lightroom 4. It has saved the way I do my photography. Uh, it saves me a ton of time. Um, and it's just that new camera raw editor is, is absolutely wonderful. So uh, thanks for checking this video out. Uh, if you guys want to read more, you can head over to the blog at DisneyPhotographyBlog.com where we post photos almost every day, little articles like this, uh, videos, gear reviews, whatever. Um, we also have the podcast, ISO 5571, which is hosted by myself, Ryan Pastorino, and Tom Bricker. Uh, you can check that out by going to ISO5571.com or for looking at us uh, on the iTunes store or if you're on an iPhone or an iPad, the podcast app. Um, so again, this is Corey. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.